two questions. One, tell us a little bit about how, from your graph, it looked like you feel pretty confident that the data suggests ice sheets uh, uh, and glaciers, et cetera, around the world are melting with a few exceptions. Tell us a little bit about the methodology by which that is measured first. But secondly, haven't there been times in the past when we've seen receding glaciers and receding ice sheets and comments uh, about, my goodness, things seem to go in, in the opposite direction, glaciers, you know, and, and what's the difference now? Right. So um, for measuring, say, the, the, what Greenland is doing, um, some of that work is done by weighing the ice sheet using the GRACE gravity satellites, which is truly wonderful. It's like watching um, cars on a, on a roller coaster, and the one goes, going down gets away from the one that's going up, and then the one going down catches up, and you watch. As, as I understand, it's fascinating that, that we've, yeah. got, we've satellites sort of pursuing each other. Yes. And gravitational attraction slows one down and by relative to the other. And by measuring the rate of that different speed, you can tell how much mass is underneath you. Absolutely. And as that mass declines, uh, there's less slowing down. Perfect. I should retire and let you teach this. Well, <laughs> I, I just think it's beautiful. This really, is beautiful. really okay. interesting. So you weigh them using grace, but then you measure changes in surface elevation. Is it going down or up using a radar or a laser from a plane or a satellite? And all of those have been done. Okay. And then you figure out how much snow is being added and how much meltwater is leaving and how much ice is leaving. And then you compare all of these to see if they give the same answer. And all of them indicate shrinkage of Greenland. You're certainly correct that the ice has grown and shrunk in the past, and I had the honor of serving for the U.S. government on the climate change science program on a report on the history of the Arctic, and what we found was very clear for Greenland. When nature made it warmer, Greenland got smaller, and when nature made it colder, Greenland got bigger, and we are now making it warmer, and Greenland is getting smaller. How, and do, we know it's, how do we know it's we, not nature? I mean, what's, I mean we, we've got the increase in CO2. But, but the skeptic would argue, well, wait a second, I can go back to 1927 and find articles about glaciers retreating. What's the difference? I mean, you know, you could look at a football team and say, well, they were losing back then and they're losing now, so what's the difference? Right, so, so the first one is the physics. Um, we just cannot get away from the warming effect of CO2. It's been known for over a century. It was really clarified by the Air Force, who were actually interested in what wavelength should I use for the sensor on my heat-seeking missile. But CO2 interacts with radiation and there's enough CO2 to make a difference. And, and we just can't get away from that physics. Uh, the second one is, is looking at, is there any other possible thing to explain this. And it really took, I'm sorry, sir, it took a few billion dollars of your money and about 30 years to say that there's nothing else that we can find in nature to do this. And this is because satellites are expensive. But someone says it's the sun. Well, then you need a satellite to watch the sun to see if the sun is getting brighter, but it isn't. And if someone says, well, it's volcanoes, then we need a history of volcanoes, and we need to know what they're doing. And if someone says it's cosmic rays, we need cosmic ray monitors. And it's taken sort of 30 years to get to the point of saying, no, we've looked really hard. We can't find anything else. Then there's a third piece, which is the fingerprinting, which is what Dr. Santer was discussing. If you were to say, okay, yeah, I know we spend a lot of money on satellites, and the satellites say the sun is not getting brighter, but maybe, maybe, maybe the satellites are wrong, and the sun's getting brighter, and we can't see it. That makes a prediction. It gets warmer down here, and it gets warmer way up at the top of the stratosphere. CO2 says warmer, colder. What's going on? Warmer, colder. So the fingerprinting in time and in space says that we got it right on the other two pieces. It's mostly us now. I want to be clear, it's not my money, it's your money. Okay. It's the <laughs> Thank it's you, the, sir, absolutely. It's, it's the taxpayer's money, I never absolutely. forget it, but I think at the same time, the consequences adversely, if we, if we don't address our energy dependence and if we don't address the, the apparently, in my judgment, real a impacts of this will vastly exceed a billion dollars, and if we can make some major changes to reduce that impact, the savings will exceed the expenditures by a darn sight. Dr. Sander, you might want to comment. Dr. Michaels, then I'll recognize my colleagues. Yeah, I just wanted to comment briefly on um, what Dr. Ali said about the, the fingerprinting. Um, we've known that increases in CO2 have this characteristic fingerprint of warming the lower atmosphere, the troposphere, and cooling the upper atmosphere since about the, the late um, 1950s, early 1960s, when people uh, performed the first numerical model experiments and doubled CO2, and, and they saw this uh, characteristic pattern of cooling of the stratosphere, warming of the troposphere. Very robust. 
We see that in virtually every model experiment that's been performed. And as mentioned, we also see it in observations too. We see it in satellite data. We see it in weather balloon data. Now, people often say these computer models are not falsifiable. They make predictions that um, we, can't, we can't test. That's not true. Back in the 1960s, when Suki Manabe and his, his colleagues at the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Lab in Princeton made these calculations and doubled atmospheric CO2 and saw this fingerprint, we didn't really have the observational data to see whether the stratosphere was actually cooling, whether the troposphere was warming. They have. The stratosphere has cooled. The troposphere has warmed. That fingerprint is robust and it's just not consistent with other natural causes.